Hello and welcome to Off My Shelves and in this episode we're going to be looking at Castle in the Stars Volumes 1, 2, 3 and 4 by Alex Alice and we will get underway. So fans of Philip Pullman Hill's Dark Materials and books in that vein really will probably love Castle in the Stars because it's that perfect mix of fantasy and science fiction. But before I get too far into the story, the build of the book as ever. Now they're all hardback books and they all come with sewn binding but they are all very light volume so they're only around about 60 to 70 pages each so they very much like kind of you know very over the top prestige comic books really in terms of the length of them they don't come with any dust jackets but they do come with this matte and glossy cover and yeah they're really well made books by our first second the english production is and they translated from french i believe but they are in album format style and so kind of european album format style so for example if we compare it to a standard deluxe edition size you get a little bit more height and a little bit more width but then if you compare it with a standard size you can see it's quite a lot bigger in height and width in general and so Castle in the Stars starts off with Seraphin and Seraphin is a young boy and his mother and father are scientists and explorers and his mother is essentially going up into the upper atmosphere to try and uncover or discover the secret of ether now ether is this mystical substance that is in reality actually has been debated about since you know Greek times really by Plato and a whole load of other Greek philosophers and lots of historical and philosophers and scientists right up to the modern day but it's this secret power that powers the earth and can do different things but the book is set in 1869 obviously through no quirk of fate it's set a hundred years before the actual moon landing and all that you know this is a world where ether will be exploited and discovered and the space race will be fought and won by French people and people will set foot on the moon in 1869 but before i get too carried away with that seraphine's mother goes up and she has devised a way of finding out whether this invisible force of ether can be captured and can be discovered in some way so she goes up in her air balloon and through various tests she uncovers that ether does in fact exist but then an accident happens and she explodes and dies and disappears but her notebook actually falls back down to earth and then you jump forward then a year and Seraphin and his father Archibald are obviously grief stricken with the loss of his mother and in general Seraphin is obsessed with Ether and has just spent this last year clearly as he shows in the first opening pages when he's in school just obsessing over the theories behind what Ether is and what it can possibly do and how it impacts our world and other worlds around us really and then very early on Archibald gets a letter but he gets a letter saying I have your mother's diary and they have to go to this castle Swans Rock in Bavaria and then they leave and as soon as they leave they get pulled into this whole world of political one-upping uh, and what I mean by that is the Prussian Empire and the Bavarian royal family and all these nations are all trying to fight over the secrets that are possibly contained in Seraphine's mother's diary because they're all after this secret of Ether to turn it into a weapon or weaponize it in some way and I love this book as well because the character development is so good because you make some assumptions about his father Archibald because of his overprotectiveness with Seraphine but then when he's thrown into this very kind of dangerous position where the Prussian government are trying to attack him and his son to prevent them from going to Bavaria without them and things like that he just kicks into action mode and you're like oh this is this is something i didn't expect from this character and it's always playing with your expectations of these characters so it's always working its way through this storyline but the characters are always doing things and approaching things in a way that you wouldn't necessarily expect which i find is always really good and rewarding the art as well is out of this world beautiful really and it very much has got this classical feel to it on purpose really because it's obviously set in this Victorian time the artwork is very luxurious it's watercolour wash and it just it's just stunning in every way really it is seriously pretty art and the detail and the work that must go into it is 
mind-blowing. The fact that it's 60 pages of this artwork and the guy writes it and draws it and colours it and basically does everything is pretty much why these things are only 60 or 70 pages long because it must take years to just do one of these. They get away from the Prussian government and they go to Swan's Rock and at Swan's Rock they discover that the King of Bavaria has the diary of their mother and within it contains evidence that Ether is real and it gives predictions on where in the atmosphere they can find it and harness it and what they want to harness it for is to actually leave the atmosphere. So they're looking to capture this power of ether, put it into batteries and then leave the atmosphere. Now the reasoning why the King of Bavaria wants to leave the atmosphere, I'll leave you to find out. And how it all goes for our main characters, I'll leave you to find out slightly as well. By the end of this book, they've, they've built and conceived a craft that can be powered by ether and they're about to test it, but wouldn't you know, lots of backstabbing happens and the Prussian government gets involved again and forces their hand and they have to try to escape capture first and foremost. And then book two begins and as it says the moon king you can probably predict where they end up in this one it starts off directly from the last one and the main character is seraphin his friend hans and sophie who is an amazing female protagonist in this really the king of bavaria archibald they're all on board this swan shaped vessel that's got a a balloon on top and that's powered by ether batteries but they have to make the decision then to kick in this ether system and wouldn't you know they can't control it as well as they might think and they end up then on the moon but it's a very very different interpretation to what you might think i mean ether as a substance is on the moon and it plays with the world around you the world of the moon in different ways and what i mean by that is on the dark side of the moon there's ether there but it can come in physical form but you can't see it it's this invisible force really you can pick it up and move it around and it can alter gravity and things like that but ultimately you can't physically see it so they call it etherite etherite crystals and then they use the etherite crystals to actually make their ship flyable without the aid of an air balloon or anything like that so they use this new physical form of ether to their benefit but also then tons and tons of different things happen and by the end of this book the king is missing and they all get back to earth and Obviously, when they get back to Earth, all of these different warring nations, Prussian Empire and all the empires around the world, want the secrets of this ether ship. And, and so they have to go on the run, essentially. Uh, but before they go on the run, they put out their information on etherite and on all of their discoveries because they didn't want one nation to have that information. And that's an important point because that kickstarts everything that happens in the next two volumes really because they are now in a world where they have kind of almost pushed forward the technological advancements by unveiling their discoveries to the public and so when you start this book they're still on the run from the prussian government but they're also looking at possibly trying to save the king who they have expertly worked out may well have ended up on mars events transpire and archibald Seraphin's father gets kidnapped and he supposedly is on Mars as well. So Sophie and Seraphin and Hans, they decide that they've got no other option really than to go to Mars. But again, their hands are a bit forced into this as well because the Prussian government are still hotly on their tail. And it doesn't go smoothly for them whatsoever, but they do end up on Mars and that really sets up the events of the fourth volume which is not the final volume in the story the story certainly has got a few more legs to go i think yeah definitely because here is very much an exploration of mars but i won't go too much into detail in this one because it'll spoil some of the events that happen in volume three a little bit but needless to say volume three and four were my personal favorite because the first volume had a lot of setup that i needed to do a lot of exposition a lot of world building and it did it expertly don't get me wrong but the character development in three and four is great because you get a brilliant 
antagonist for a start which is kind of lacking a bit in volume one and two there isn't really a a, a, a physical and strong antagonist to fight against they are there but they come and go fairly quick in three and four they are there throughout and they are there causing havoc and problems throughout but equally the world building on mars and the creation of alien cultures and civilizations is phenomenal the way it portrays mars is just beautiful in every way i think and really intriguing on every level but either way that is a look at castle in the stars volume one two three and four and these are certainly going to go on and on i have no idea how many are going to come out but i'm looking forward to continuing the french man on mars storyline because our characters are still very much in a bad way and I won't tell you where and how, but certainly I want to find out more. But I hope you've enjoyed watching and I will catch you on the next one.